One of the lessons front and center in Jonah chapter two is that God always answers. Look at it in Jonah chapter two and verse one. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress and he answered me. Now here's the reason why I'm bringing it up because there's some of you tonight and you really wonder if God's gonna answer. And that works against effective praying. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him, this is Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, anyone who comes to him must believe that he answers. You have to believe that you're gonna receive from God. God wants to work in your life. Sometimes you have an idea, some people have the idea that, well, John, he might answer your prayer or he might answer my mom's prayer, but I don't know whether he'd answer my prayer. And a lot of times what happens, what it's the root of that insecurity when it comes to prayer is that you look at your life and you're saying, I'm not where I wish I was. I'm not where I know I need to be. And so I'm not sure God's gonna answer my prayer. It's really one of the disadvantages of not walking as best you can, as much as you can, close to the Lord. Because it, it causes an instability in your faith. But here's the thing that's very interesting about Jonah is I, God, God does answer his prayer. I wanna give you three quick things. Number one, God answers us even when we are guilty. Just to point out the obvious, when Jonah's praying, he's not on his way to Nineveh. I mean, he's, he's been thrown into the ocean. He's running from God. He's rebelling against God. He's going his own way. That's why he's inside this ginormous fish. And some of you are in trouble tonight because maybe of your disobedience. Maybe you look at your situation, you're saying, I don't feel like I can ask God to help me because I know why I'm in trouble. I know why I'm in the storm. I know why I'm having this battle. I know I'm the one who did it. I'm the one who caused it. And you've been on the run, or you've been living that self-centered, self-absorbed life. And now you're wondering, if I pray, will God even listen? Because maybe God's just saying, you know what, you deserve it, and this is part of my punishing you. And you know, listen, all of those things are not helpful necessarily toward prayer in this moment. In this moment, you have to believe God answers prayer. I mean, that God gives people another chance. I'm not advocating that it doesn't matter how you live because the Bible says this in Psalm 66, if I had cherished sin in my, sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So if you're loving your sin and you're wanting to pray and ask God to help you, that's not gonna work. Jonah in this prayer is gonna say, in the first part of verse nine, he's gonna say, I will fulfill my vow. So Jonah's turned back to God. What I'm saying to you is if you're in a place where you're saying, I'm willing to turn back to God, your life may be a mess and you may be the source of that mess and your selfishness could be the cause of that mess and you could be guilty up one side and down the other. But the fact of the matter is, if you'll turn to God, he will hear you and and he will answer your prayer tonight. That's great news. And the enemy wants you to think, oh no, he won't. Look what you've done. Look where you've been. Look who you are. And why would God, why would God, you wouldn't answer your prayer, so why would God do it? And that's a lie from the enemy. Because God is a God who answers prayer. The second thing I want you to notice, God answers us in impossible situations. Here's Jonah, Jonah 2 and verse five, the waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me, weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. I mean, it doesn't get any more desperate than this. He's gasping for breath. There's huge waves. There's pounding rain. He's drowning. And all of a sudden, the fish swallows him. And Jonah is thinking, I'm good as dead. The game's over. 
And you know what happens in life? The details, no doubt, are different, but the desperation some of you are feeling tonight is exactly the same. You're sitting here tonight and in a situation you're facing, could be your marriage, you feel like it's over. Could be your relationship within your family, a son or a daughter that's in rebellion and maybe you haven't handled that right and you're thinking it's over. Could be a work situation and you're thinking, man, I've, I've so blown it, it's over. Could be, you know, medical, the diagnosis is grim and, and the darkness won't lift and you're thinking it's over. Or you're praying, sometimes you and I will pray and then what happens is things go from bad to worse. And your question is, how can there be hope in that moment? Look what Jonah says in verse six. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you, yet God brought up my life from the pit. Oh Lord, my God. In the life of faith, there's always that yet God. There's always that but God. I, I, was, I wasn't going to make it, but God, help me. The relationship was over, but God, help me. I didn't know where I was going to go, where I was going to turn financially, but God, help me. It looked really bad. Everybody said you're finished, but God, help me. He's the God who loves to show his power in impossible situations. And let me just encourage you, the more impossible your situation, the more God delights to say, let me show you what I can do so the people around you can see it, so you can be a testimony of my power, of my grace, of my ability to give you a divine turnaround. Number three, God answers us at just the right time. He's not early, he's not late, he's always on time. You say, it hasn't happened yet. God is on time. He's at work. Look at it, Jonah 2, 7. When my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Sometimes we pray and what happens is, it seems to us from our vantage point, God is not doing anything. So Jonah, I believe Jonah's praying up front, that Jonah's praying at the start. I don't believe Jonah has a lot of time to pray when he's swallowed by that fish. But he is praying and it doesn't seem God is doing anything. And what a lot of people do is when they're praying and they don't see an answer, then they conclude that God isn't working or God isn't willing, and then they stop praying. They say, well, it must not be the will of God. Or I don't see God doing, and they get discouraged. They say, what, what, what's the use of doing this? Because I'm, there, I'm praying all the time, but I don't see God. I don't see God coming. I don't see his help anywhere. But even when we can't see God working, or we can't see how God is working, we need to believe that God is working. Tonight, God's at work in your life. If you, you say, you know what, I came down to the altar before and I haven't seen a change yet. God is at work. When it seems nothing is happening, God is at work. When it seems that, that the people you've been praying for haven't changed a bit, God is still at work. When you, when you don't see any sign yet that anything's turning, God is still at work. You say, but John, I prayed and it didn't get better. It got worse. God is still working. And your situation could look as lifeless to you. It could look like it's totally dead. But God is the God of salvation. God is the God of resurrection comebacks. God is the God who is able to resuscitate your situation. He's the God who raises the dead. He is the God who can bring things back to life. And Jonah's declaration at the end of the chapter, look at it in verse 9, is salvation, or you could 
say deliverance belongs to the Lord. He's the God who rescues. He's the God who restores. He's the God who works. He's the God who delivers. He's the God who saves. And he's the God who always answers. Always. So tonight, the God who always answers wants you to ask. He wants you to pray. I don't know what you need. I don't know what you're going through. I just know he's the God who always answers.